There we go. Okay, we have uh, we have the great Eli Garcia, who's going to catch Dominic, and then so we're going we're going to do them uh, sequentially. Okay. Yeah, yeah, one after another. Yeah. Okay. So stepping up is from the Youth Firefighter Academy. We have Dominic Bell. Dominic. Dominic's been warming up for the last 30 seconds, and he is ready. Going from the mound, I like that. Dig it in. There's the beauty on the inside. Nice pick. Um, behind it. Yes, so. Okay, that's going to be a tough one to follow up. We can throw a slider. <laughs> okay, and we have from. Who's, who's got two? Oh, yeah. Who we got here, Kevin? Hold on. Do you have no way? NPM company, Soccer player. This is NPM. Do we have a cheer for the NPM company? Oh, you guys. Okay. All right. There's room for improvement, but we got there's more games coming. Thank you. ceremonial first pitches here this afternoon. Well done. And now, the starting lineups for your Vallejo Admirals. From the Dominican Republic via the Bronx, New York, in right field, number 10, Vladimir Gomez. Designated hitter, a major leaguer with the Dodgers in 2017, number four, Okoye Dixon. I'm Dix. In left field, the home run champion of the Pacific Association last year and the league leader this year. No, 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 no. Your Arcelano Kalina hitter, the 2017 Pacific Association MVP, former Mets minor leaguer, number 12, Tillman Pugh. Oh, At third base, out of Florida International, from Fort Worth, Texas, number 16, Zach Files. At first base, out of Cal Berkeley from Beaverton, Oregon, number 11, Jacob Wark. Out of the University of Arizona from Owensville, Missouri, catcher number 60, Ryan Cooper. From the University of Oregon out of Houston, Texas, shortstop number 54, Matt Greenstein. Outside. 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 
Out of Pepperdine University, voted as top defensive third baseman two times in the Pacific Association, number eight, Chris Fornacci. And on the mound for the Admirals out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, former Oakland A's draft pick, number 30, Dakota Free. The Admirals are managed by the 2017 Co-Manager of the Year out of Atlanta, Georgia, P.J. Phillips. There we Simulcasting go. on Bay Area Sports TV. I want to thank Tim Banks for uh, setting this up. I think this is the fourth game this year that we've simulcast live on the internet. Uh, so. If uh, you can't get enough of our lovely voices and you want pictures with it, that's where to go. But we're happy to come through on VallejoAdmirals.com and the Mixler app as well. So if you are catching us on Bay Area Sports TV, we're getting a look at Dakota Freese finishing up his warm-up pitches here. We'll try and be inclusive of all of you. Yes. We won't just assume all of you can see it. <laughs> the danger of the simulcast. <laughs> Leading off at force line at Cody Bishop. Cody is playing center field for the stockade. Cody's hitting 263. He's got 30 RBIs, which with the release of Gelfman and him going over to San Rafael, Bishop is second on the team in RBIs, one behind Kaz Canella. Canella is playing left field today for Salina. So we get set here for the first pitch. Get a look at Bishop, the left-hander stepping in and stepping out. Dakota Freeze taking his usual walk behind the mound before he gets started with his day. On deck is Kaz Canella, as I mentioned, he's playing left field. And batting third to lead off the game is Omar Arts in the shortstop. And that first pitch is a little high and a little outside. 112, 112. 112 is our official start time to the day here today. And the 1-0 pitch, this time outside corner at the knees for a called strike. So as you mentioned, Damon, Freeze is coming in with a six and five record here today as that second pitch miss or that third pitch misses the zone two and one. Six and five and it's three nineteen ERA. This is his twelfth start for the Admirals. As that pitch misses inside. Three balls and one strike now to Bishop. Got, we also have the Firefighter Youth Academy here in attendance today. And that pitch is fouled straight back over my head. I was just going through the emails to figure out who do we have to cite today, so good <laughs> job. <laughs> I was reading the back. Now of, I no longer have to do anything. <laughs> I was reading the back of some sweatshirts <laughs> seated here in front of me in the Marina Dental Grandstands. <laughs> so count is full to Bishop as Freeze gets set to deliver. High leg kick, and that too is fouled back and out of play. So, quite a few Cal Maritime Academy students here in attendance, along with the cadets. Just check this out. Are you serious? The count that remains full, and the pitch That's from Freeze. Why and that is a big breaking ball that misses outside. So that's how this game will get started. Now for the stock eight, left field number four. With a walk to Cody Bishop. Now Kaz Canella. Kaz we've seen play second base quite a bit for Slina, but he'll be out in left this afternoon. So runner on and nobody out. It's the right-hander in the box and get set. And that pitch on the inside corner at the belt for a called strike. So 
So as I mentioned, Canella has 31 RBIs and 9 home runs for Salina. Batting 226, though. It's in 155 at bats. And that is in tight. Spinning out of the way is Cause. Count is now even 1-1. One and one. Bishop has a decent lead over at first. And that pitch is also high and tight, two and one. And that's gonna send the new Admiral catcher, Ryan Cooper, out to have a little chat with Dakota. While we have a second here, I'm gonna go ahead and go over the defensive alignment for Vallejo. In the outfield, we've got Nick Aiken Sr. in left, Tillman Pugh in center, Vlad Gomez out in right. In the infield, Zach Files at third, Matt Ureste playing shortstop. Chris Fernacci at second. Jacob Wark moving in from the outfield to play first base. Dakota Freeze on the mound. New catcher Ryan Cooper behind the dish. And that is hit high but flared. And it will be just in front of the fence. It stays in play. But not hit quite high enough for Cooper to get to. Exactly. Just kind of a little flare off the bat. Not enough time for Cooper to get under it. So it's a 2-2 count now to Canella. And that breaking ball just misses off the inside corner. Big sweeping curve from Dakota. So two batters and two full counts here in the top of the first. Are you, you saying that's inefficient? I'm saying that is the second walk now in a row. <laughs> given up by Dakota. As we mentioned before the game got going, the Admirals have a tendency to fall behind early and some late game heroics usually get them the win, but only seven innings going to be played here this afternoon. Might not be the best strategy. So two runners on and nobody out for shortstop Omar Artson. Dakota takes his time looking into Cooper for the signs. And that pitch is in there for a called strike. Artson hitting 265. He's got 60 strikeouts, which leads the team. On deck is a new player manager, Taylor Zutenhorst. He'll be DHing for Salina today. The Owen pitch. Just misses the zone. One ball and one strike. So there's still plenty of time to get out here. So we're in the top of the first inning, Wilson Park. And that is hit in the hole between shortstop and third. Everybody is going to hold up in advance. Well, Advance to second and third on that single by Artson. So plenty of time to get back out or get out here to the ballpark. Merchandise up to 50% off select items. And for every home run hit by the Admirals today, there will be three t-shirts thrown out into the crowd. Wow. <laughs> so be sure to get out here and cheer on your Admirals. Do we have a full t-shirt cannon? We don't. Aw, oh, damn. <laughs> but I was telling, telling them that they, I'm leaving the booth window open, so don't be afraid. <laughs> so bases loaded, nobody out for Zutenhorst. Looks at a first pitch called strike. Zutenhorst is also our Napa Smith beer batter of the game here at the ballpark. Napa Smith. Beer batter of the game, if they strike out, it'll be a dollar off beers the remainder of the inning. And there's the second strike as that pitch is fouled straight back. 0-2. Oh so, so Salina officially represents Salina, Kansas, but there is a California flag on the left <coughs> shoulder it's, of the uniform. It's not where you're from, it's where you're at. <laughs> That's a confusing thing. <laughs> That's a new patch, I believe, too, on their uniform. I think so, too. 
and that pitch just misses outside one and two. So Zootenhorst, two thirds of the way to a dollar off beers for our fans here in attendance. Wind blowing the usual left to right out there and it's kicking pretty good. And that's a big curveball for a call three strike. So there goes a dollar off beer for everybody. Compliments of Napa Smith. And if you're playing along at home, go ahead and take a dollar off your beer as well. Have one for me, ladies and gentlemen. So I was going to bring up Rupert Watson. Rupert, a new addition to Salina. Part of their roster shake up here as of late. As he looks at a first pitch ball, Watson was reinstated to the active list back on the 7th. Watson's hitting 308 in 13 at bats, four RBIs and one home run. And that's a big swing and a miss. Even up the count, one and one. So bases are loaded in one away here in the top of the first. Nobody has come in to score yet for Salina. As Dakota gets set and delivers the 1-1 one, one pitch. Right down Georgia for a called strike, one and two. Pretty modest lead over a third by Cody Bishop. Just a couple of steps off the bag. He's wandering off into the grass a little bit. Freeze looks in. And that is a big sweeping curve that didn't quite sweep, didn't quite break. So high and tight. It's going to even up the count two and two as Watson leaned just out of the way to avoid getting hit. Came close to getting his back as a bat as his bat was still on his shoulder as he leaned back. So 2-2 two -two count. The right-hander gets set. And that's a big swing and a miss at that curveball. That this time it breaks and gets the out. So back-to-back -back strikeouts after back-to-back -back walks and a single. Bases remain loaded. For Ryan Rodriguez, Rodriguez playing first for Salina. 96 plate appearances, he's hitting 229. Former Admiral. Big right-hander digs in and looks at a first pitch called a strike. You're getting into a little bit of trouble early. Freeze definitely looks to have regained his focus. Pitching from the stretch, he gets set. And that's another big curveball, this time just missing off the inside part of the plate. One and one to Ryan Rodriguez. And that is fouled back in off the face mask of Ryan Cooper. I actually think it got the top of the helmet. Home plate umpire today, Eric Thompson, giving Cooper a minute to gather himself as he walks a fresh baseball out to Dakota. A little house cleaning as he sweeps off the plate as well. Wilkins Jimenez, of course, on the inactive list for the Admirals for taking too many shots to the head. We talked to Wilkins last night. He says he's feeling good, hoping to be back on, in the lineup for the playoffs. Wilkins has taken more shots to the head than most boxers take in a Indeed. title fight. And that pitch is low and outside, two and two. Looks like Ryan Cooper is wearing a 
Milwaukee Brewers helmet under his mask. Old school 80s style. The I love the baseball mint logo. Absolutely. So 2-2 two, two count, two outs, bases are loaded, and the pitch from Dakota. Big sweeping curveball for the third strikeout in a row, and that's going to end the top half of the first inning. So Salina was threatening. They will leave three on the bags with one hit, two walks, three strikeouts. We're going to head into the bottom half of the first inning. You're listening to the Vallejo Admirals Broadcast Network. A1 Guaranteed Heating and Air Conditioning is a family-owned and operated... What happened there? Merchandise booth. ...business that serves Solano, Napa, and Contra Costa counties with heating and air conditioning, solar power, tankless water heaters, windows, insulation, and or duct replacement needs. Solano County's best of Solano for 10 years. Diamond certified, better business bureau on a roll, and are a Bay Area green business. Visit a-1guarantee.com or call 707 707- Six four five zero seven three four. Mountain Mike's Pizza is proud to feed the players their post-game meal at select Vallejo Admirals home games. Come on in to Mountain Mike's in Vallejo or Benicia and show your Vallejo Admirals ticket stub to get 25% off your order. Mountain Mike's is located at 972D Admiral Callahan Lane in Vallejo and 2130 Columbus Parkway in Benicia. Family and friends, check out Live Entertainment Daily and view the upcoming calendar of events at EmpressTheater.org or call 552-2400. And we're back here in the bottom half of the first inning. It will be Vladimir Gomez, Okoye Dixon, and Nick Aiken Sr. getting things started for Vallejo. Dakota Freeze in the top half of the inning got himself into trouble and then got himself right out of it, leaving three Salina batters stranded on the bags. Three strikeouts in a row. That'll give Dakota 85 strikeouts this year, which leads the association. as the right fielder Gomez approaches the plate. (laughs) That's a new move I don't recall seeing to his routine as he tapped home plate umpire and the catcher Milian on the shoe or cleat boot, if you will, with his bat before making his way down the line for his practice swing and basically just getting getting into his groove out there as the right-hander settles into the box now. And the first pitch from Jordan Young, and that is hit. Right past shortstop Artson. Gomez making his way over to first, takes a turn, but will hold up. And that is a leadoff single for Vallejo. Now the designated hitter, Okoye Dixon, San Francisco native. Fairly recent addition to the ball club. In 49 at-bats, Okoye is hitting 367, 18 RBIs, and six home runs. So definitely a great addition to the lineup for the manager, P.J. Phillips. Jordan Young on the mound for Salina looks into the new catcher, Eddie Millian, for the stockade. And that pitch is high. Ducking out of the way is Dixon. Real quick, the defensive lineup for the Stockade. Out in the outfield, we've got Kaz Canella left, Cody Bishop, and then Johnny Knight in right. The infield will go clockwise around the diamond. Dave Gallagher, Omar Artson at short, Rupert Watson, and then Ryan Rodriguez at first base. And as we mentioned, Jordan Young on the rubber and Eddie Millian behind the plate. Young checks on the runner and a big swing and a miss from Dixon, one and one. (laughs) 
So Nick Kraus, the former Admirals catcher, then moved over to Salina, has moved on from Salina to the Lincoln Salt Dogs. So Million now taking over duties behind the plate. And that pitch misses high, two and one. Nick Krause, a great defensive catcher. Wish him well with the Salt Dogs. Gomez with a good lead over at first. And the two-one pitch, another big swing and a miss from Dixon to even it up two and two. Good down and away movement on the slider there. Definitely, especially with a, a power bat like Dixon looking for something maybe middle, maybe a little bit middle away, and that pitch definitely tailed itself right out of the zone. And that is a big breaking ball there to get the strikeout, sending Dixon back to the dugout. So one on and one out for Nick Aiken Sr. Aiken's also the hitting coach for Vallejo. 19 home runs and 49 RBIs. The home runs leads the association as well as the team, and the 49 RBIs leads the team as well. It's a right-hander. Gets set to see his first pitch. And there goes Gomez. The throw down is in time, says Ricardo Rodriguez. Gomez trying to slide underneath that, but unable to do so. Didn't pick a bad pitch to run on. It was a breaking ball that stayed high, but a terrific throw from Millian down to Watson. So far here in the second inning. And a big swing and a miss for the second strikeout in a row. And that's going to end the top half of the second inning. Three up, three down for Dakota Freeze and the Admirals. When we come back, it'll be Tillman Pugh, Zach Files, and Jacob Bork. You're listening to the Vallejo Admirals Broadcast Network. For the first of our competitions here this afternoon. The Napa Smith Brewery is a proud sponsor of the Vallejo Admirals and of the Napa Smith Beer Batter at every Admirals home game. Napa Smith is a family-owned and operated brewery that upholds the classic beer style that gave American craft beer its start. Napa Smith beers feature balanced recipes made from the best ingredients. The Napa Smith Tap Room in Vallejo is located at 101 Yolano Drive. Call us at 707-252-4392. Powell Brothers Feed and Pet Supply, family owned and operated in Vallejo since 1977. They are dedicated to the health and welfare of your pet and so much more. From food to toys to grooming, visit Powell Brothers at 1895 Broadway in Vallejo and learn about special Admiral fan discounts at powellpet.net or give them a call at 707-644-3333. This is Nick Akins, and you're listening to Admirals Baseball on the Admirals Baseball Network. So we've got some Cal Maritime Academy students participating in a three-legged sack race. They were going the wrong direction. Usually it goes third base to home. They went first base to home for some reason. No rhyme, no reason, no idea at all. <laughs> Also, there's a pole over there. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is for. <laughs> a rousing game of <laughs> rousing game of tetherball, getting ready to break out That'd be here. Sweet, a little tetherball action. So the sack race here at Wilson Park, sponsored by Sacks Hot Dogs. 
If you're from Vallejo, you know Saks Hot Dogs very well over there on Springs Road. Art Solano, cleanup hitter out of Oakland, California. Center fielder number 38, Tillman Hughes. The sack race is just one of the many fun activities that the Admirals provide here for the fans in attendance. Want to mention that these are this is the double dub inning here for the Admirals. We have a mystery contestant, but if an Admiral hits a double here in the second or the eighth inning, they will win a fifty dollar gift certificate from the Vallejo Holistic Health Center. If an Admiral hits a ball off the BAM sign out in left field at any time during the game, it, the contestant will win a four hundred and twenty dollar gift certificate. That is a breaking ball that bounces off the outside part of the plate <laughs> to Tillman Pugh. Tillman missed a decent amount of time this year with on the inactive list. He's hitting 256 and batting from the right side of the plate for this at bat. And that pitch misses high and in, 2 0. We've seen Pugh play a little bit of second base with injuries plaguing the Admirals for a little bit and that is hit sharply to Artson at short he throws it over to first base and gets the out now batting for the Admirals out of Fort Worth, Texas third baseman number 16 Artson normally with a really strong arm didn't look like he got a lot on that throw but he got it over to first in plenty of time let's bring up third baseman Zach Files. Zach also bit by the injury bug for a little while there. Came into last night's game with a pinch hitting appearance. This is his first start since July 27th, I think. And he looks at a first pitch ball. Zach's hitting 254 for Vallejo, 130 at bats. And he hits that one well into right field and wave goodbye. Zach Files with his fourth home run of the year makes his way around. one nothing Vallejo over the Salinas Stockade here in the bottom half of the second inning. TJ's Designs dispersing some t-shirts into the crowd. Well, he just kind of got a nice swing on a ball, got it up there into the wind. Didn't look like he obliterated or anything. He just kind of got it up there and it kept carrying down the line and over the fence into the trees. It's going to bring up Jacob Wark. A big lefty looks at a first pitch high and outside. Yeah, we've seen on day games here, especially in Vallejo, when it's warm and windy, the ball definitely can carry out to right field. And there's a pitch on the outside corner, one and one to Jacob Wark. And if you go by the flag in center field, it's blowing a lot stiffer today than normal. And there's a, a big cut, but no contact. One and two count to Wark. Wark still leads the Admirals with 16 stolen bases, but Matt Ureste and Vlad Gomez making a charge here late in the season. They each have 15 bags. And that is hit high into right center field, running over his Bishop, and he reaches up and makes the catch. Work hasn't been getting the starts lately. That's allowed the other guys to catch up. He's getting a rare start today. And that was hit well, but not quite high enough into right center field. So that'll be the second out of the inning. It's going to bring up the new catcher, Ryan Cooper. The right-hander steps in, and the pitch from Young is high, 1-0. Montreal Marshall had a minor uh, hip injury, I think he told me. It had to come out of yesterday's game, and so I think that opened up work getting the start. 
big swing and a miss by Cooper. And this is looks like this is Cooper's first at bat for Vallejo. He's got a one one count. And that's a big breaking ball in there for a called strike. One and two. I want to say he was signed before Thursday's game, right before the rosters had to be finalized for the postseason. With the shots that Jimenez has been taking behind the plate, it's a good idea to have a second catcher on the squad. And that is fouled off at the plate. Foul ball, foul ball. Hit Cooper's foot. Oh, that's okay. Couldn't quite see from where I'm standing. And now we see Cooper walking it off. The right-hander hitting it off his left foot. So the count remains one and two. There's two outs here in the bottom half of the second inning. The Admirals lead the stockade one to zero. That run coming off a solo shot hit to right field by Zach Files. It's good for Zach's fourth home run of the year. And Cooper is able to hold up and check that swing. So it's a 2-2 count to the catcher. High breaking ball started to go. Eric Thompson points down to Ricardo Rodriguez, and Ricardo says, no, sir. A 2-2 pitch from Young, and that's another breaking ball. This time it floats just a bit outside off the plate. Full count to Ryan. And that is low, and will be a walk for Cooper as he makes his way down to first. Shortstop Matt Ureste. A left-hander stepping into the box after a few taps of on the plate from his bat. Ureste is hitting 271 with 28 RBIs. As we mentioned, 15 stolen bases. Ureste in close to the plate. His back foot in the box on the plate side back corner as he looks at a first pitch ball. Cooper with a modest lead at first. And the 1-0 pitch is just high, 2-0. So the defense is shifted in the infield for the left-handed Ureste. Second baseman Rupert Watson playing way out onto the grass in shallow right field. Shortstop Artson is shifted over up the middle. And that pitch was inside. Looked like catcher Milian tried to whip it over to first and see if he could get Cooper sleeping, but Cooper able to get back in time as that throw was way offline. 3-0 to Ureste. Jordan Young checks on Cooper over there at first. Now gets set. And that is hit well into right field. Oh, looks like a little bit of a blooper. Diving in is Johnny Knight, and he makes the catch to end the inning. Sounded like some loud contact off the bat, but it ended up dying there in shallow right field and a fantastic play by Knight to end the inning. But not before Zach Files gives the Admirals a 1-0 lead with a solo shot. We come back. It'll be the top of the order for the Salinas Stock Aid in the top of the third inning. You are listening to the Vallejo Admirals Broadcast Network. Colonial Chapels at 1000 Redwood Street in Vallejo places a staff of the finest caring personnel in your service and maintain outstanding facilities for the comfort of the family families they serve. They work with you to personalize your arrangements so they are the most meaningful for you and encourage and welcome your thoughts and wishes. Call them today at 707-643-0391.
Have you seen our new ticket booth or perhaps our merchandise store? All this was done by the industry leaders at Transport Products Unlimited. They can deliver standard sized and custom configured storage containers directly to your home, office, job site, or baseball stadium. Count on TPU for all your storage needs. Phone 567-9704 or log on to transportproductsunlimited.com. Medic Ambulance is the exclusive 911 ambulance provider for all of Solano County with the exception of Vacaville. Proudly offering their services for over 30 years, Medic Ambulance is a family business with strong ties to the community and offers ambulance standby services for special events. For more information, visit medicambulance.net or call 644-8989. Welcome back to the top half of the third inning. We're here at Wilson Park in sunny, beautiful Vallejo, California. The Admirals lead 1-0 over the Salina Stockade. Due up in the top half of this inning for Salina. It'll be the top of the order. Cody Bishop, Kaz Canella, and Omar Artson. Throw over to second base to get the lead runner on the force play. Just, a, just your typical 4-9-6 force play. Absolutely, <laughs> for those of you scoring at home. It was a tough play. You could see Chris reach his arm out saying, I can't see it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if anybody else is in the neighborhood, let's help me out here. And we've talked about this a lot. Day games here at Wilson Park are just horrible for infielders and outfielders to find the ball up there in the sky. Yeah, not only do you have to battle the sun, the wind is always a factor here in the west part of town. So the water is very close. That's going to bring up Omar Artson, who squares around to bunt. And he leaves his bat out there and doesn't make contact. Oh, and one. So, so I think when you have weird force plays like that, you should play those numbers in the lotto. So you should go four nine six. It's Saturday, so that would be a good yeah. call. <laughs> it's the draw tonight. I may have to buy a second ticket. And <laughs> that is chopped foul down the third baseline. Oh, and two to Artson. So Kaz reaches on the fielder's choice. On deck, Taylor Zutenhorst, the new player manager for Salina. And that is a foul back at the plate. Count remains 0-2. So as I was mentioning, the Cal Maritime folks in attendance, lots of students out here. We also have some Firefighter Academy cadets. It's a nice, lively atmosphere out here at Wilson Park. The O2 count is in tight. Fastball has Artson jumping out of the way and now has a one and two count. Tillman Pugh, the center fielder, is shading the right center gap. So that pitch misses high. And the right-hander, Artson, a possible threat to go the other way. Artson singled back in the first inning. It was one on and one out. And... Looked like Canelo was going to go. This is hit high into shallow left field. And it looks like Chevy Clark is now in left field. Nick Aiken Sr. is out. So, yeah, we uh, nobody signaled up here to let us know, but that's definitely Chevy out in left field. And looking around the field, everybody else is in position, so we have to believe that Nick Aiken Sr. Uh, felt something and needed to come out of the game. It's going to bring up Taylor Zutenhorst. Not only the cleanup batter, but also the Napa Smith beer batter of the game. The designated hitter gave all of those in attendance a dollar off beer back in the first inning as Taylor struck out. Taylor looks at a first pitch ball, 1-0. and oh. 
So one on and two away. It's the tall left-hander in the box looks at a second pitch outside, 2-0. Oh. The Admirals lead the stockade 1-0 to zero here in the top of the third, and that is in tight. And it doesn't quite get Zoon Horses. He's able to tap dance himself out of the way, but that's going to advance Kaz Canella to second on that wild pitch. That pitch came very close to hitting Zooten Horse in the foot. Not entirely sure how he was able to manage to get out of the way. Out of the way. So now, a runner in scoring position. A 3-0 count to Zooten Horse. Dakota Freeze gets set. And that is hit high down the third baseline. Making his way over there is Files battling the Sun in foul territory. Makes the catch to end the inning. So no harm, no foul, no damage done as Salina leaves a runner on second base. That's going to do it for the top half of the third. When we come back in the bottom half of the inning, it'll be Fernacci Gomez Dixon. You're listening to the Vallejo Admirals Broadcast Network. Stay connected to all your community news, sports, business, and entertainment information with the Times Herald and TimesHeraldOnline.com. Available in print, online, or mobile, you get all your breaking news when it happens, the way you want to receive it. Call 644 50 478 today to subscribe and ask for your Admirals All Access special offer. Serving Vallejo and Solano County since 1875. Get connected and stay connected with the Times Herald. Call 644 5478 today. Did you just get back from the mountains? Did you go off roading recently? Time to hit Jack Anthony's Seven Flags Car Wash. Or bring your car out to Wilson Park, where it could win the title of Dirtiest Car on the Lot, thanks to Jack Anthony's Seven Flags Car Wash. With 10 locations in Northern California, including two in Vallejo at 135 Valley Vista Avenue and 2020 Springs Road, Jack Anthony's Seven Flags Car Wash is the place to clean your baby. Every stitch of authentic Admirals team gear is brought to you by TJ's Designs. Head to the team store right now to check out hats, shirts, hoodies, blankets, and novelty items, and new gear like pajamas and tie-dye shirts. TJ's also offers custom pieces. You can personalize an Admirals replica jersey with your name and number. When placing your order at TJSDesigns.com, mention the Admirals and receive 10% off. Local, fast, friendly, affordable. TJ's Designs. We're back here in the bottom half of the third inning. The Vallejo Admirals lead one to nothing over the Salina Stockade. That one run came courtesy of a Zach Files solo shot into right field back in the second inning. Chris Fernacci, Admiral's second baseman, is getting set to take his first at bat of the game. Fernacci batting ninth. Local Bay Area kid, Chris from Walnut Creek. Local boy making good Cinderella story. Yeah, you know. 16 RBIs, two homers. <laughs> yeah, he's batting 241 for Vallejo. Right, that's enough of that. <laughs> Fernacci missed a good portion of the season with a broken thumb. Said he will wear a brace out on the bags for the remainder of the season as that pitch is a strike, and that's going to even up the count one and one to Fernacci. Zion gets set and delivers that pitch just a bit outside, two and one. Top of the order, coming up, Vladimir Gomez and Okoye Dixon. Young starts his motion and delivers. That is high and tight. 
for some reason, Fernacci moved out of the way. <laughs> He'll move out of the way if it's upstairs. <laughs> if it's on, if it's. On the body, on the flesh, he'll stand perfectly still and let it hit him. For those of you that aren't familiar, <laughs> Chris has been hit 16 times this season, and that's in 112 plate appearances. The 3-1 pitch is outside, so Chris will lead off the bottom half of the third with a walk. No, not you. Chris, we're not just saying So yeah, Chris not afraid to take one for the team ever. Now Vladimir Gomez. Vlad led the game off with a single, but then got caught stealing. Let me bottom half of the first inning. One on and nobody out for the right-handed right fielder. Young checks on Fernacci. Fernacci with a good lead over at first. That's a big breaking ball. It sails outside. 1-0. and no. So Gomez hit that single on the first pitch of the game. We've seen him start his at-bats fairly aggressively. If it's close, he's usually swinging at that first pitch. Young checks on Fernacci. And that is a breaking ball that misses... Inside, 2-0. and What's funny about Vlad is about 90% of the time he goes up there extremely aggressive. And then when the times he's not aggressive, he tends to be bailing out of there when the pitch is on the way. <laughs> like when he's when he's taking, he's just like, I'm not sticking around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, that's a business decision. I'm not here for it. And that is swung on and popped up into shallow right field. Charging back is Warren. And coming in to make the catch is Knight. So a great job there by Johnny Knight charging in. He was playing fairly deep in right field. A major leaguer with the Dodgers in 2017. Johnny Knight with the catch and a nice job by Fernacci there. That is the hardest play for a runner on first to deal with because you need to be off the bag enough to have a shot to get to second if it drops. But you have to be close enough to be able to get back if the guy catches it. And Fernacci went about, I don't know, maybe a little bit under a third of the way and uh, was able to get back. Now up designated hitter Okoye Dixon. Okoye struck out his first at bat. So there's one on and one away as that breaking ball floats over the outside corner of the plate to the right hander for a called strike, 0 and 1. Now Fernacci's been taking a pretty good lead over there at first. And as you mentioned, some really smart base running on his part not to get doubled up on that pop out. Big swing and a miss from Dixon, 0-2. Oh this is Dixon's 12th game, six home runs and 18 RBIs. So a much needed bat in the lineup for Vallejo. 15 they runs scored too. That pitch sails inside, one and two. Now the Admiral's offense, really I think since the short time that Brandon Phillips was here, after that it seemed to kind of catch fire for the Admirals. It's still a little bit sputtering in the sense that it would go a couple of games well and then kind of take off for a few days again. But then it's when Marshall got hot. That's almost exactly when that hot streak started of 15 out of 18 games. A few games into that, they signed Dixon, and he's helped a lot as well. And that is hit up the middle and right past the outstretched arm of Artson as he dives. Chris Fernacci is going to make his way over to third base. So now first and third with only one out for the Admirals. As we mentioned in the top half of the inning, Nick Aiken Sr. is out of the game. Not entirely sure what had happened with him. But now Chevy Clark, who took over in left field for Aikens, is up to bat. And this will be Clark's first at bat this afternoon. Now we mentioned that uh, we never got a signal. Eric Thompson had no idea the, of the substitution. And right now is getting 
the substitution reported. Now, the way the rules work, it's just an unreported substitution. There's no penalty for uh, not being told. But uh, now Eric's waving up to us, and we're like, yeah, we already know. He was playing in the outfield last inning. <laughs> but uh, you, you are supposed to tell the umpire when you make a switch. Yeah, it's just good to know what's going on. Well, the official lineup card, it, it doesn't matter what we have up here. It's yeah. whatever the umpire has written down on the card in his pocket. In 185 plate appearances, Chevy's hitting 232, 23 RBIs, and 7 home runs. Batting from the left side. And that is outside for ball one. So we've got pretty good speed over at third base with Chris Fernacci. We've got, I'm going to say maybe average speed at first base with the Koye Dixon. <laughs> and that pitch is low and inside, 2-0 and to Chevy Clark. Now why would you say that? Well, when you hit home runs like Dixon does, there's really no need to run very quickly around the bags. Young checks over at the runner at first. And the 2-0 pitch. And that is hit into center field. Moving to his right and back is Bishop. He catches it. Fernacci tags and comes in for the Admiral's second run. Okoye Dixon getting back to first base in time. So a sacrifice fly by Chevy Clark. Now batting for the Admirals, your 2-0, Vallejo over Salina. Hey, LaSalle High, center fielder number 38, Tillman Pugh. It's going to bring up center fielder Tillman Pugh. Pugh grounded out to short to lead off the second inning. So run on first and two outs. Looks like some discussion between Ricardo Rodriguez and home plate umpire Eric Thompson. Rodriguez out on the bags. Okay. So Dixon with a modest lead at first. Young checks on him and the first pitch to Pew. It's a breaking ball that sails in high, 1-0. Oh. Tillman wearing number 38 today. He usually is wearing number 12. Are we sure that's Tillman? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. Can tell by the facial hair. Yes, definitely. And that pitch is low and outside, 2-0. Oh. That was uh, Ricky Jingris' number, I believe. 38. Oh, never mind. Ricky's was 31. Jimenez normally wears 38. Jimenez. That's the catcher that normally wears it. How can you f forget Wilkins, man? I don't forget him. <laughs> ever. I just knew one of our catchers had 38. I haven't been here in two weeks, Damon. <laughs> Pull off my game. And a 3-0 pitch is in there for a called strike. So 3-1, 2, number 38, Tillman Pugh. Maybe it's laundry day. Number 12 is in the wash. Could be, could be. So 3-1 count, two outs, a runner on first. And there is a walk given up by Young. That'll be the second walk given up by Young today. Oh, excuse me, third walk given up by Young. Out of Florida International University, third baseman number 16. Now up, Zach Files. Zach with a solo home run back in the second inning. A tall left-hander, takes a couple practice swings before stepping into the box. 
So two on and two out here in the bottom of the third inning. Admirals lead 2-0 over the Solana Stockade. And that is hit right back up the middle. It's going to drop into center field. Akoye Dixon showing off some of that speed. Comes in to score. Sliding into third is Pew. Going down to second on the throw is Files. 3-0. Admiral's lead over the stockade. Well, welcome back, Zach Files. Home run is first time up. RBI single here. And the Admirals now lead it three to nothing. Bring up former Cal Bear, Jacob Wark. Loved how the uh, arts in there went up the ladder and tried to stab that ball up the middle. He got up there pretty good, but the ball was hit too hard. And that is hit well into right field. It's gonna hit off the fence. Coming in is Pew. Followed by Files and a stand-up double for Jacob Wark. Two RBIs. Wark hit that on the fly, low off the wall on the Savage and Cook sign. It's the penultimate banner heading out from right to center field out there. And a two-run double. And in this seven-inning game here, the Admirals with a 5-0 lead here in the third. Now up the new catcher to the squad, Ryan Cooper. Cooper walked his first at bat. He stepped into the box with two outs and a runner on second, and that runner on second is fast. Jacob Wark leads the team in stolen bases with 16. Dances around out there with a good lead, and that first pitch is low, ball one. If you've listened to our broadcast, you've heard us talk about the athletic abilities of Wark. Wark is listed at 6'4", 230. And that pitch is a called strike to Cooper. And at that size, Wark can move. Former Cal Bear played football and baseball in Berkeley. And the 1-1 pitch is on the outside corner. Fastball for a called strike. 1-2. and two. So Admirals with a 5-0 lead here in the bottom of the third. as pitcher Jordan Young gets set and that breaking ball is hit high into shallow right field charging in his night battles the sun and makes the catch to end the inning but not for the Admirals can put up a four spot they lead five zeros we head into the top of the fourth inning Damon Esper will come in on play by play you're listening to the Vallejo Admirals broadcast network Verna Mistico, broker and owner of Mistico Realty, is a real estate leader who believes in excellence in service for local business and for the community. Contact her at 552-5660 or go to MisticoRealty.com. With the tavern for more casual get-together, Zio Fredo's has something for everyone. Family owned and operated, Zio Fredo's invites you to come join the family. Zio Fredo's provides post-game meals to the players at select Admirals home games. Call them at 707-642-8984 or drop on by at 23 Harbor Way here in Vallejo. All right, Damon Esper and Stephen Babb back with you here on BayAreaSports.tv and the Admirals Baseball Network. The Admirals leading this one 5 nothing over Salina as we head to the top of the fourth inning. Again, this is a seven-inning baseball game here because it's the first of two for the Stockade on the afternoon. They'll be playing at San Rafael tonight. This was originally the plan in the Pacific Association this year that 
the stockade would play seven inning games. If you're familiar with college baseball, you know they would play seven inning doubleheaders on Sundays often back in the past. Uh, for whatever reason, it got changed at the league level into nine inning games, and that's caused quite a problem all year long with the stockade often not able to get to the other uh, ballpark on time to start the games so we're doing it this week I can't tell you exactly why we're finally doing it this week but that's the situation Admirals liking the rule right now leading this one 5 nothing as we head to the fourth inning 5 runs 5 hits for Vallejo no runs 2 hits for Salina Dakota Fries on the mound and he'll face Rupert Watson Ryan Rodriguez and Johnny Knight Watson struck out his first time up 0 for 1 Admirals with one in the second on the home run by Files and then four runs in the third inning to take the 5 nothing lead. Free so far has struck out five in his three innings of work. Did walk the first two men he faced in the game. He's allowed those two walks and two hits in three innings, no runs. Freese leading the Pacific Association now with 87 strikeouts on the year. Talked about earlier, he has won his last three starts. Is now 6-5 and five on the season. And has really kind of emerged lately as what the, uh, what the Admirals expected for him to be, which is their ace pitcher. Carl Bryce has pitched well. Skylar Janice has been a revelation. But uh, Freese was the opening night starter. Kind of got off to a bit of a funky start, but he's an experienced pitcher here in the Pacific Association spent some time with the Pittsburgh Diamonds San Rafael Pacifics and the Admirals expected him to be at the top of the order and he has emerged as such and with the playoffs coming up starting on the 28th possibly the Admirals having to use him in that first game depending where they finish Fries is going to be the first starter we expect. He starts Watson off with ball one there one and know the count. Next pitch is up and in ball two. Two and know the count to Rupert Watson. Beautiful day here. Blue sky, wind blowing out pretty briskly to right center and now actually blowing out more towards center field. Just a touch of the haze in the air. That pitch in for a strike and it's two and one. Breeze keeping things cool. It's been a hot week here in the Bay Area. I was in hiding during that heat wave. <laughs> I refused to come out of my air-conditioned home. Curled up in a ball. Crying, yes. Next pitch of the curveball in there for a strike, two and two. I know you're lying. <laughs> I saw a photo of you and your daughter at the Giants game the other day. Ah, uh, you got me. I wasn't, I wasn't on assignment. I was out at Oracle Park. And it was... I checked the weather pr uh, report the day before. It said 76 and sunny. I got out there and it was more like 95 and miserable. So you were like Regis. <laughs> 95 and miserable. Old Letterman joke for you there, guys. If you watch the Letterman <laughs> show, you know that one. Looks like uh, Rupert Watson had to get a new bat, so he's uh, just getting back there. Two and two the count. You're like Darren Rogers, 70 and sunny. <laughs> that pitch is swung on, lifted into center field, waiting for a response here. Struggling to get under that ball is Tillman Pugh with the sun, but he makes the catch, and there's one away. Tillman with his left hand, his glove hand outstretched, shielding the sun, and didn't even have to move it to make that catch. It was a pretty good play there by the center fielder. So Ryan Rodriguez, former Admiral, coming up. One out here in the top of the fourth inning, 5 nothing Vallejo. Rodriguez struck out to end the first inning. He actually, the ball was dropped by Cooper, and he stepped on the plate to record the final out. So 0-for-1 one, oh for, one for Ryan. Right-handed hitter waits, and he waves at a breaking ball on the count 0-1. Freese 
kicks and delivers, and the next pitch is swung on, popped up right side in foul territory. Work chasing it down, but it's back on the stands. And the count now 0-2. Work earlier this year, I mean, we all have our little Jacob Work stories. Earlier this season, he had a pop foul on that side playing first base where he ran over to the fence and just leapt up and reached over and picked it back into play for a catch. But that one was about 20 feet out of play. Even Jacob Wark can't get that. 0-2 pitch. Curveball, strike three called. Strikeout number six for Dakota Fries. And there's two away here in the fourth inning. Yeah, we've seen Wark sell out, diving for line drives. We've seen him jump up over the fence, as you mentioned. Seen him run a wheel route on a ball that got carried through the wind to make the out out in left field. Saw him go to third base on an infield error from the home plate. We saw him score from second base on a sacrifice fly. Saw him move from first to third on a wild pitch. Here's a pitch to Johnny Knight, and it's outside ball one. Knight flied out to right on a uh, sinking line drive that Vlad Gomez made a nice catch on back in the second inning. So Johnny is 0 for 1. Next pitch, a fastball upstairs, 2-0. Oh. Two down, top of the fourth. Admirals with a 5-0 lead. Looking to get back on the winning track, having dropped two in a row. Lost to Sonoma here on Thursday, then lost to San Rafael on the road last night. That one hurt. That's fouled back towards us off the screen in the count 2-1. Admirals now two games behind the second place Pacifics with seven to play. So the playoff format, the stepladder format that some of you who watch the PBA tour on television know, three and four will play on the 28th at the third place team. Then the winner of that plays at the second place team the next day. Ball bounces there, three and one the count. Yeah, it looked like Freeze lost his footing when he landed with his lead foot there. He stumbled off the mound. Certainly selling it with the kicking of the dirt on the landing area on the mound. Then the winner of the second versus winner game will play a three-game series against Sonoma starting on August 30th at Sonoma. 3-1 pitch on the way. That's upstairs, ball four. A two-out walk to Johnny Knight. And now bring Dave Gallagher to the plate. So finishing second, a big deal in the Pacific Association this year. You have to play one fewer game. You only have to win one to get into the final series. And now the Admirals, after doing an admirable job of catching up, winning the 15 out of 18 to tie San Rafael, now find themselves two games out of second again with just the seven left. The good news for Vallejo, they've got games with San Rafael here at Wilson Park tomorrow and on Saturday the 24th, so still have a shot. First pitch is inside and hits Dave Gallagher, so two on with two out. And here is Ed Millian. Dave Gallagher, we're 98% sure, is not the former Major League infielder. He would be somewhere around 58 years old now. <laughs> but he was a Met at one time. So two down, two on. And here's Ed Millian, the new catcher for the Salina Stockade. Millian strike out, struck out his first time up, 0 for 1. And the pitch to him is a curveball swung on and missed. 0 and 1 the count. When Freeze is able to get that curve to break, he's been able to locate it pretty good to these right-handed hitters on the inside and outside part of the plate. Dakota comes set, looks back at Knight at second, comes home. Again, the curveball. That one's taken for a strike, and the count is 0-2. Sam Rafael will play the stockade later tonight after this game, so the Admirals need the stockade to lay down for the rest of this one and then play hard tonight. That pitch misses, ball one, one and two. Tomorrow's game will be on KZCT Vallejo, 89.5 OzCat Radio here. Steven will be with Tim Fitzgerald on that call. Swung on and missed in the dirt. Cooper up with it. He throws to first, and the side is retired. So 
No runs, no hits. A hit batsman and a walk. Two men left on base. We're headed to the bottom of the fourth inning here in Vallejo, Wilson Park on Bay Area Sports TV and the Admirals Baseball Network. The score, Vallejo 5, Salina nothing. Tim Heimstra, Napa River Realty, provides the economic development and vitality of the city of Vallejo. When you buy or sell your property with Tim Heimstra, you'll receive superior service from his outstanding support staff. Call 827-9118 or visit NapaRiverRealty.com. Sack's Tasty Hot Dogs, located at 2445 Spring Road in Vallejo, is the official hot dog partner of the Vallejo Admirals. Sack's is the place to go for delicious classic hot dogs and the amazing chili cheese dogs. Sack's is also the sponsor of the Sack's Hot Dogs Dizzy Sack Race held at every Admirals home game. Sack's is a Vallejo institution. Call them now at 707-642-2442. Whether you're a homeowner, business owner, or family member, the professionals at Vallejo Insurance Associates, LLC, can find the right coverage to fit your lifestyle, needs, and budget. With over 60 years of experience, Vallejo Insurance is staffed with specialists who are dedicated to providing you with quality customer care. Stop by their offices at 840 Tuolumne Street in Vallejo, call them at 554-6080, or log on to VallejoInsurance.com. Damon Esper, Stephen Babb, back with you on Bay Area Sports.tv and the Admirals Baseball Network. Admirals with a 5-0 lead as we head to the bottom of the fourth. Jordan Young still out there for the Salina Stockade. Jordan is just making his second appearance for Salina today. He had a relief appearance earlier, two innings. Four runs, two earned, four hits, and no strikeouts and a walk. A 9-0-0 earned run average coming in today. And through three, he's allowed five runs on five hits to the Admirals. It'll be 8-9-1. Matt Uresti, Chris Fernacci, Vladimir Gomez for the Admirals. As soon as they get the tires off the field, they are having a tire race around the outfield just beyond the infield dirt. So that being wrapped up. Again, beautiful day here in Vallejo. Got the uh, Firefighter Academy kids. We got the Keel Haulers from Cal Maritime out. Everybody having a good time so far. Uresti flied out to right his first time up. He takes a little bit high, ball one, one and oh. If I had to run in that tire race, Damon, if I was a keel hauler, I think I might have keeled over. But what if you're a tire hauler? I'm not familiar with those. Ah. Rupert Watson is not quite as far back. Now he's moving back into the outfield as Uresti takes ball two. First time up, Watson was well out into right field. Here on the first pitch, he was on the edge of the grass, then kind of, I think he was getting told during the at-bat to move back. So now at 2-0, and oh, he's several steps back on the outfield grass in right. Uresti chops one towards Watson. It takes a big hop, and Watson does a nice job. But then the ball can't be dug out at first base by Zudenhorst. The throw was a little bit low, so I'm thinking Watson will get the error there. Yeah, I think I would give it to Watson. It was a tough play, but he had time if he would have made the throw. Looked like he rushed it. He did. Uresti's got some speed, but he had, he had a few steps on him. The other thing about that is if he was playing a normal depth, uh, maybe that ball hops over his head. He was able to kind of jump up and get it on the downside. So leadoff error for Uresti. Modest lead at first as Chris Fernacci steps in. Chris walked his first time up, takes a breaking ball in for a strike. Oh, won the count. 5 nothing. Admirals lead it. We're in the, top of the, f in the bottom of the fourth. And again, a seven-inning game here this afternoon. That was Fornacci's 36th walk, and he almost was hit for the 17th time in that at bat as well. You can only have one. Another breaking ball again, a strike. It's 0 2. Statistically, you, you can only have two. However, you can have a play where you get hit and it's a walk. On the ball four. Ball four hits you. If ball four hits you and the umpire rules you did not get out of the way, the ball, you get charged for the walk. 
Fenacci swings, lifts one high in the air down the left field line, coming over in the corner and unable to make the play is Canella. So Uresti stops at second. He had to wait up to make sure the ball wasn't count. So a 322 foot single for Chris Fernacci. Admirals have two on with nobody out. And here's Vladimir Gomez. Yeah, that was a lucky break, I think, for Salina because if Ureste would have been closer to second, he probably could have taken third when that ball dropped. But if Ureste is not on, it's a double. Yes. Oh, That's for basically sure. it. For and, sure. and, but Ureste just had no chance because he had no idea whether Canelo was going to be able to run it down. Yeah, but even from that distance at the wall, uh, the chance of him being doubled up at first would have been pretty slim. So nobody out here is Gomez. He singled, popped out, was also thrown out trying to steal a bag in the first inning. Middle infield, double play depth. Corners, as Salina tends to do, both are tight to the line, and the pitch is high. Ball one with a breaking ball. Salina likes to play its corner infielders very tight in what you would think of as a no-doubles defense, but they do it all game long. So Zudenhorst over at first, maybe 12 feet off the line. Gallagher at third, maybe about the same. Young set, here's the 1-0, and that's lined back up the middle and through for a base hit. Uresti had to hold up to let the ball go through, but he's coming around third. Here's the throw from Dempster, not in time, and the Admirals lead it six to nothing. Stopping at second is Fernacci, still nobody out. And here's Okoye Dixon coming up. Normally Artson with the runner on second would be shading more towards the middle infield on that. But this time he was playing in the traditional shortstop position and unable to get to that as it was hit sharply right back up the middle. So timeout and Taylor Zudenhorst is going to come out of the dugout and talk to his pitcher. I think we said it was Zudenhorst at first. It is not. It's Ryan Rodriguez playing first. Sudenhorst came out and made the mound visit on Tuesday as well. That's when Chuck Rocker was still the manager of the team. Carter Rodriguez during the break is coming in to talk to Eric Thompson who apparently took a shot somewhere and Eric's bent over, hands on his knees. I'm wondering if he got hit in the head when the uh, ball came in to home plate. So Vlad Gomez and Okoye Dixon all help, trying to help on Thompson. Oh no, he has water in his eye is the problem. Now we see they're pouring water in there. Might be dust in his eye. Could be dust in the wind. Kicking up dust out there in the infield. Thompson deciding whether he needs another shot of that in the eyeball. Now he's going to take a drink, and Okoye Dixon catching up with Ricardo Rodriguez gives Ricardo a hug and a pat on the butt. And now everybody pats Thompson. And Thompson's explaining now that what happened was when Rusty slid in, he kicked up the dust, and that cloud is what got him in the eyeball. So. Thompson appears to be fine. Meantime, Zudenhorst is heading off the mound, kind of taking a look over to check on the umpire. And Thompson, of course, explaining what happened to Taylor. And it looks like we're ready. So nobody out. Runners at first and second for the Admirals. A run in. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Vallejo leading six to nothing. And here's Dixon. Dixon's one for two. Singled last time up. Came around to score. He also struck out. Dixon now 19 for 51 on the year for the Admirals. This is his 12th game. Jordan Young ready, delivers a breaking ball in for a strike. Young's done a good job delivering those breaking balls for the most part, but 
Last couple innings, the second and third time through, the Admirals seem to be timing them a little bit better. Fernacci at second, Gomez at first. 0-1 is fouled straight back on the fastball, and the count one uh, is now 0-2. On deck, Chevy Clark. He came on for Nick Akins in the top of the third, we believe. We don't think he came in in the second inning. He showed up in left field at one point. <laughs> 0 2 pitch is high, ball one, one and two. Hey, he just kind of popped up out there. Yeah. He made a play on a pop up to left field, and that's when we noticed it was no longer Nick Aiken Sr. out there. Yeah. So Dixon behind one and two, young coming set, looks back at Fernacci. And here's the pitch. And that's on a hop. Count two and two now to Okoye Dixon. Dixon, the San Francisco product out of Washington High School. His dad has been out pretty much every game. When we're on the road, he's usually set up on his chair right behind our, our broadcast booth, so we get to interact with Richard a lot during games. He's back there making sure I don't mispronounce Okoye. 2-2 is chopped towards the left side, up with the, the shortstop Arts, and he's got one at second, back to first, a double play. Fernacci over to third, but there's two away now. So a big double play there for the stockade. Young now an opportunity to get out of this without any further damage. Here's Chevy Clark. Chevy hit a sacrifice fly his first time up in the third inning. Before that, Akins had flied out to left in his only at bat. So Clark hitting 232 now with seven home runs and 24 runs batted in, and he takes strike one. We're in the fourth. Admiral's leading it six to nothing. Oh, one is swung on. High fly ball down the right field line. It is foul. Clark lifted it, but you could see it had an awful lot of hook to it. And the wind, of course, pushes it towards the line down there. And Eric Thompson makes the clear signal that it's foul. P.J. Phillips isn't so sure. But the only two people in the park who had a good look at it are Chevy Clark and Eric Thompson. Clark made a grimace. It was certainly well above the foul pole. If you're familiar with major league foul poles, this is not what we have here. That probably extends up maybe 20 feet off the ground down the line. And that ball was well over that. So pretty tough to tell for sure. At any rate, it's a strike, and it's 0-2. Young's pitch is a fastball up and away, ball one. It's one of those rare times here at Wilson Park where the wind doesn't help you is the shot down the right field line. Yeah, and especially on a day like today where it is blowing pretty strongly, that can definitely push a ball fair on the left field side and foul on the right field side. Clark swings, fouls the next one off to the left, and the count remains. One ball and two strikes. Yeah, right off the bat, there was no doubt that that would have had the distance. It just didn't stay in fair territory. Young ready, the one two, and that's inside and hits Chevy. So Clark will take first base. First and third now with two down, and here is Tillman Pugh. Tillman grounded out, walked, and scored a run. He's 0 for 1. Tillman wearing number 38 today. Tillman, one-time minor leaguer in the Mets organization.
outstanding athlete. He, as we've talked about, he was both a running back and a defensive back for De La Salle High School. And an outstanding baseball player, obviously. And the first pitch to Tillman is a breaking ball that doesn't break very much. Stays up and in. Ball one. Yeah, you definitely have to be talented if you're going to play those positions at De La Salle. We were having lunch with Bob Sanso, who's a longtime teacher and team photographer for the Spartans, as Pew takes a curveball for a strike. One and one. This is maybe a week and a half ago, and Bob pulled out a picture of Tillman as a defensive player just blowing up some poor kid on the field. <laughs> <laughs> we want to get Bob to make a print of that and bring it up and give it to Tillman. One and one the count. And that swung on hit high in the air to left field and deep. And that is off the scoreboard for a home run. So Tillman Pugh with a three-run home run to break this one open. It's nine to nothing now in favor of the Admirals. Tillman said, hey, Chevy, I got your back. You missed that one. I got you here. <laughs> I'll bet Chevy still wishes he got it, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. So Pew with the three-run shot. That's Tillman's seventh on the year. He now has 32 runs batted in. And here is Zach Files, who has homered and hit an RBI single. Files takes high, ball one. Files a solo home run in the second, and actually singled in a run in the third. Big lollipop that drops him for the strike. That was a pretty one. Files is going to take a second to recalibrate things. Now he's back in there. Left-handed hitter waits. Fastball swung on. Flared foul on the third base side. Coming over to have a look is Gallagher, but it's out of play. Count is one and two. Nine runs, eight hits for the Admirals. No runs, two hits, an error for Salina. Just six games left in the regular season after today. Young ready, a breaking ball comes inside, ball two. Two and two the count. Again, the final week schedule. Tomorrow, it'll be Sam Rafael here, 105. On Tuesday, check it out, on Wednesday, the Admirals will be at Sonoma. Next pitch is swung on, fouled off to the left again. Still stays two and two. So Monday and Tuesday off at Sonoma on Wednesday. Then Thursday, Salina is here. That's a 6.35 game. Friday, Napa is here, 6.35. Saturday, the final home game, San Rafael back here, a 5.05 game. So that's the regular season schedule the rest of the way. Fouls, chops one foul to the backstop. Count remains, two balls and two strikes. Then the Admirals will play one more road game, maybe. It's scheduled for Monday the 26th at Sonoma. That's the makeup date for the rained out, sprinklered out in reality game in Sonoma. Email from the commissioner today said that that is an optional make out update. It's going to be up to Sonoma if they want to, uh, if they need it to charge admission to make it up. So it's going to be a decision to be made. Fouled at the plate again by Files. Count remains two and two. Uh, the question, of course, for on Sonoma's end is there's absolutely zero for Sonoma to play for. Uh, there's a possibility of something for the Admirals to play for if they were within a half a game of second place one way or the other with San Rafael. Files uh, got hit on that foul ball, so he took a walk over to the first base side. Eric Thompson looking at him, asking him if he's okay. Zach, who of course just came off the injured list, not wanting any more injuries here. But it looks like he's okay. And he's back in there. Jordan Young, meantime, back on top of the hill. 
Right-hander kicks, delivers. Here's the 2-2, and it's swung on and fouled, I think, off his foot again. I think that hit Zach's right foot that time. He's got some protection on that. Now he's shaking both feet before getting back in the box. Two and two still the count. It's like he's channeling Jimenez there. That's yep. slowing up ball three. I was just thinking that. <laughs> so three and two to Files. Who says baseball's not a dangerous sport? Not Wilkins, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, definitely not. Young Ready, the payoff pitch. Swing and a miss. Down go fo goes Files. Down go the Admirals, however. The Admirals roll a four. Four runs on three hits. There was an error, and nobody left on base. Four innings in the books. We're heading to the fifth. The score of Vallejo 9, Salina nothing. This is Bay Area Sports.tv and the Vallejo Admirals Baseball Network. Local Iron Workers 378 asks, are you interested in getting more iron in your diet? Are you looking for a career with a bright future? A career that will allow you to complete a university level education in a union building trade? Call 746-6100 to begin your career path today with Local Iron Workers 378. I've got one earned run for those who care. No, check that. No earned runs. No. All unearned. Savage and Cook Distillery is proud to sponsor free hot dogs for kids at every Saturday Admirals home game. Kids 10 and under will get a free hot dog, bag of chips, soft drink, and Rice Krispie treat at every Vallejo Admirals Saturday home game during the 2019 season. Savage and Cook Distillery is located at 1097 Nimitz Avenue on historic Mare Island. Call them at 707-388-1864. New and exciting things are happening all year round at the Solano County Fairgrounds. Bring your family and friends out to the fairgrounds to make everlasting summer memories. There's horse racing, simulcasting and wagering, motorcycle lessons, and so much more. And of course, the always exciting Solano County Fair. Visit scfair.com or call 551-2000. Damon Esper, Stephen Babb, happy you joined us here on Bay Area Sports TV, the Admirals Baseball Network, ValeoAdmirals.com, Mixler app, or whatever your portal of choice is. Admirals with a 9-0 lead as we head to the top of the third inning. Dakota Freeze on cruise control. He's allowed just two hits in his first four innings. Admirals looking to improve to 31 and 27 on the year. They're in third place in the Pacific Association. Again, six games left after today. Two of them against San Rafael. Admirals need to take care of business and give themselves an opportunity to try and finish second in the league. Yeah, we're in the top half of the fifth and only seven innings here today since the Stockade have a doubleheader. Just a reminder to the folks out there, we won't be leaving you early on purpose. Well, I guess we are on purpose. It's not by accident, I guess you would say? It's not by accident. It's, uh, again, they were, the, the plan was, uh, we talked to Dean Poteet about this a month ago. He said the original plan was that these games would all be seven innings on both ends of the doubleheader, just like College teams used to play. Swing and a miss by Bishop leading off here in the fifth inning. And uh, <coughs> we're not sure why. Apparently at the league level, a discussion was had, and they decided to play nine innings. And that has messed up the second game schedule because rarely is Salina able to get to the second location in time to start on time. And for whatever reason, finally, here with a week to go in the season, they've decided to go to with the seven innings. Uh, right now, the Admiral's liking that idea. They lead 9 nothing. Here's a 1-1 pitch. Waved at him. Missed. Count 1 and 2. Yeah, instead of going down by 9, the Admirals decide to flip-flop it here today and be up by 9. So, yeah, we're in the 5th, and the it's getting late, even though it doesn't feel like it yet. It's going to do wonders for the pace of play, though. <laughs> 1 and 2 the count. Bishop swings and misses. Down he goes. One away here in the top of the fifth. Strikeout number seven for Dakota Freeze. That's number eight, I believe. Eight? I'm sorry. Yeah. You're right. There were two in the last inning. I only saw one here on my... 
Talk about pace of play. If the Admirals keep putting four spots up here to finish out the game, it's going to take a regulation nine inning game time. Well, the old joke is, say something for me, said the next day's starting pitcher. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Cos Canella. Takes a breaking ball high, ball one. Cause walked in the first inning, hit into a force play his second time up. He's 0 for 1. That pitch is down low, 2 0. As we were saying, the uh, in the old days in college, they would play weekend series with the Sunday would be a doubleheader, and they would play seven inning games in the doubleheader. That swung him and foul tipped for a strike, two and one the count. Uh, you don't see that so much anymore at the college level, but that was the idea when Salina was coming in. If they were going to be playing doubleheaders on Saturday, which they have been all year, that each game should be seven innings. And that hits Canella off of his left arm, maybe at the elbow. Eric Thompson following him in the first base. So one out hit by pitch. And that's the second batter hit by Freese today. And Freese looked like he knew it as soon as he released it that that was going to be a a tough shot onto Canella's arm. Canella was wearing some protection there, so as he takes it off and hands it to his first base coach, hopefully it got the plastic and not the arm, but he's rubbing that elbow. It definitely got him pretty good, and now he's shaking it out a little bit, standing behind first base. He needs another minute here. Omar Artson will come up. Omar's a shortstop. He singled his first time up, flied out. He's one for two. All right, we're ready to go. Short lead at first for Canella. Here's the pitch home, and then it's outside, ball one to Artson. Admirals on the field right now. Work at first, Fernacci at second, Uresti at shortstop, Files at third, Clark, Pugh, and Gomez left to right across the outfield. Ryan Cooper behind the plate, and Dakota Freeze delivering another pitch missing. 2-0 the count to Artson. Pugh in center playing the other way against Artson. He's several steps over towards right. A breaking ball stays high. 3-0 the count. Middle infield double play depth with Frenacci and Uresti. Files in on the cut of the grass at third base. Work, of course, holding the runner on at first. Now Files takes a step backwards, about even with the bag now. 3-0 pitch, and that's right there for a strike, and it's 3-1. It looks like Clark out in left is also shading more towards center, giving up a lot on the line to the right-handed hitter. Well, except it, it's, that's about where Nick Aikens always seems to play, so it just struck me as normal for the Admirals and left. That's high ball four to Artson, so two on with one out. And here's the cleanup man, the player manager for the Salinas Stockade, Taylor Zudenors. Taylor started the year with San Rafael, came over pretty early to Salina. He's 0 for 2 today, struck out and popped out. Left-handed hitter, the designated hitter today for the Stockade, and he is the Napa Smith beer batter. So here in the yard, if he strikes out, the patrons get dollar off their beer for the rest of the inning thanks to Napa Smith. However, Dakota Freese misses with ball one, and that's going to cause a visit to the mound by Ryan Cooper. I believe this is the second mound visit of the game for the Admirals. Cooper came out in the first inning. Cooper, of course, his first time catching Freese just signed this week. And I don't know if you get fewer mound visits in a seven inning game. <laughs> no, no one explained that. That's definitely not in the major league rule book. <laughs> no, absolutely. 1-0 pitch here. That swung on, fouled off the netting to the left and the count 1-1. That's 
Wonder what last call is here at the park since we're going seven. That's right. Normally, seventh inning is the last call. You have so many questions when you go to the seven inning game. I mean, there, there, there should be a whole one sheet on what the procedures are. We don't know if the beer batter is still good after this inning, you know. I got a sure it is from Rogers. All right. <laughs> Curveball misses. Maybe dropped a little bit too low. And the count is two and one to Zudenhorst. If they are going to cut it off, they probably need to let us know so we can announce it. Because <laughs> then the keel haulers are going to riot. <laughs> Pitch misses, ball three, three and one. <laughs> I see uh, uh, quite a few red solo cups out there in the hands of these keel haulers. <laughs> I need to know in case I need to maybe make a run downstairs. <laughs> they can take the cups home and play beer pong with them. Swing and a miss. Big swing by Zudenhorst. He ends up on one knee, and the count is full. Taylor did not get cheated there. So full count, one down. Canella at second, Artson at first. Freeze comes set. Here's the pitch, and it's ground into left field for a base hit. Uh, Canella had to hold up to watch the ball, so the base is loaded now. Second time the stockade has loaded the bases. And here is Rupert Watson. Watson came up with the bases load and one out in the first and struck out. Later on, he flew out to center. He's 0 for 2. So bases loaded, one out, top of the fifth inning. Stockade trying to get back in this one. Admiral's leading it by a score of 9 to nothing. Fries back into the windup. Right-hander deals, and it's a fastball swung on and missed. Count 0 and 1. Watson, the second baseman. Still pretty new to the club. Now he steps back in there. Right handed hitter points the bat out towards Freese. Freese looks over at third base at Canella. Now he starts his windup. It's a big, soft curveball in there for a strike. And count is 0 and 2. This is Watson's fifth game with Salina in his 16th at bat, hitting 308 for them. Or excuse me, it'll be adjusted now since he is 0 for 2 on the day. Indeed. Got to pull the calculator out. Let me slide my shoe off to carry the one. 0 2 pitch, check swing. Yes, he did, says Eric Thompson. So strikeout number nine for Dakota Freese, and there's two away. So here's Ryan Rodriguez. He struck out twice in the game, 0 for 2. Rodriguez out of Folsom. Oh, and one now, the count to Ryan. Freeze ready. Into the windup, the pitch. Swung on and missed. Here's Freese into his windup, swung on and missed. So on three pitches, he strikes out Ryan Rodriguez, and the side is retired. Ten strikeouts now on the game for Dakota Freese. We're I was about to say we're halfway through this one, but no, we are not. We are through four and a half of a seven-inning game. The Admirals lead it nine to nothing. And we'll be right back on BayAreaSports.tv and the Admirals Baseball Network. 
O'Connor Lumber and Ace Hardware has been in the same family for over three generations. They're a full-service lumber yard and hardware store that meets the needs of the contractor and the do-it-yourselfer alike. Located at 4310 Sonoma Boulevard, O'Connor Lumber and Ace Hardware is the place with the helpful hardware folks. For more information, call 707-642-8921. How would you like to win free pizza for a year? You can thanks to the Vallejo Admirals and Pacifica Pizza. At every Admirals home game, one lucky fan will play for a chance to win free pizza for a year. If an Admiral player hits a home run in the fifth inning, the contestant will win one free extra large pizza of their choice from Pacifica Pizza. If an Admiral hits a grand slam, the contestant will win free pizza for a year. Register to enter today at Pacifica Pizza at 1332 Lincoln Road East or call 707-554-3030. This is Tony Pugh, and you're listening to Admirals Baseball on the Admirals Baseball Network. All right, Damon Esper and Stephen Babb back here with you at the Admirals Stockade game. We're doing a dance-off, although the guys, all right, now they're starting to move. <laughs> I, and I guess they, so far, the Stockade has not taken the field. We're curious because we're not sure Jordan Young might be done for the day. So we have nothing to update you on. And of course, we're the afternoon game, so we have nothing to update you on the scoreboard. So we'll tell you about the upcoming games here once again. The Admiral's back here tomorrow against the San Rafael Pacifics. That's a 105 start. That game will be on OzCat Radio, KZCT here in Vallejo. Uh, do they then off Monday, off Tuesday at Sonoma on Wednesday? That's a six o'clock game at Sonoma on Wednesday night. Then back home for the final three home games. Salina back here on Thursday, 6.35 p.m. Napa here on Friday, 6.35. San Rafael here on Saturday at 5.05. The Admirals two games behind the San Rafael Pacifics with seven games to go counting today. And again, the second place team is gonna host a playoff game against the winner of the third and fourth place team on August the 29th. So getting second place saves you one game in the playoffs. Salina so still hasn't taken the field here as the dance off is involving the removal of shirts and cheers and all kinds of stuff going on. Salina so players enjoying this, taking a look. And now here we go. And so we are going to have a new pitcher here for Salina. And it's number 30 who is not listed on our roster, so we're going to have to find out who the pitcher is. Rich Ackerman? I think it's Ac Ackerman? Uh, I have uh, number 30 listed as Ridge Ackerman for Salina. Ackerman's not listed on their roster right now is the problem. That doesn't mean it's not him. So hopefully somebody will help us out and let us know who's in for Salina. <laughs> At any rate, it's 9-0. Admiral's leading as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Whoever it is, he's right-handed. <laughs> Yeah, I've got him here on my roster. From earlier this year? No, from this morning. Oh, really? He's not listed on Point Streak right now is the problem. Yeah, I, I printed this this morning, and I've got his stats. All right, well, then we're going with Ridge Ackerman until we're told otherwise. <laughs> what are his stats, Stephen? So this will be his ninth appearance. He's got an... 8.81 ERA, a 2 on 1 record, 33 strikeouts against 23 walks. And he is a listed at 6 foot 5, 215 pound right handed pitcher. You mentioned a dance off. I don't know if that was dancing, Damon. That was um, two skinny college kids moving rather awkwardly around home plate. <laughs> Yeah. 
That's uh, that, w- that was my impression early on. <laughs> I'm just glad I didn't have to call it. So after all of that, so again, Ridge Ackerman, unless it's not, he'll take over here in the bottom of the fifth inning. He'll face Jacob Work, Ryan Cooper, and Matt Uresti. Work has doubled and flied out, one for two, knocked in three runs. And that first pitch knocked misses. in two runs, missed with a pitch. Curveball is in for a strike, and it's one and one. Nine runs, eight hits, no errors for Vallejo. No runs, three hits, an error for the Stockade. Admirals up 9 nothing here in the fifth. Work swings and fouls that one off. One and two the count. Ackerman, that three-quarter stance, facing the third base dugout, pivots, kicks, delivers, down low, two and two. Again, Watson out in shallow right field. However, Artson at shortstop still on the shortstop side of the bag. So a lot of room up the middle for work. He lines it right there and through into right center field for a base hit. So second hit of the game for Jacob. And Jacob stretches that single into a double. He's insane. He just keeps doing things like that. You look down for a second and he's running. <laughs> he, you know, he's the biggest Forrest Gump type player I've ever seen. He just never stops running, ever. And with Watson playing out of a normal second base position, he was definitely unable to get to that ball as it was shaded more towards up the middle. And the ball made it out into shallow center and Work took advantage of it. And I don't think he ever broke stride. He seldom does. So out to talk is the catcher, Million, with Ackerman. And here's Ryan Cooper. Ryan walked and flied out 0 for 1. Second double of the game for Wark. Ackerman comes set. Pitch is in for a strike. It's 0-1. Wind blowing out more straightaway center now. It's been blowing pretty hard all day long. Ackerman comes set. Looks right at Wark. Curveball misses. One and one. On deck, your SD. Ackerman staring right at work. Curveball. That one's good. It's one and two. So Cooper in a 1-2 hole, right-handed hitter waiting. Again, this is his first game with the Admirals, just signed this week. Do you want to run the, um, the raffle? Yeah. you want me to have Kristen? Here's the 1-2, curveball again. That's lifted in the air towards right center field. Coming over and making a nice sliding catch is Johnny Knight. Tagging at second and heading to third is Wark. And there's one away. Has a great job there by Knight making his way over into the gap to make a play on that ball. Looked like it was starting to die. Might have a chance to drop. But no shot at work or getting work at third. He was tagging up all the way. So here's your SD. He reached on an error last time up and he hit that ball to right field. The Knight made that sliding catch on. So he's 0 for 2. The first pitch to him is in for a strike. Ackerman right back at it, and that's inside, and somehow did not hit Uresti in the legs. 
one and one. Again, Watson with the lefty up out in shallow right field. Maybe 15 feet onto the grass there. I haven't seen Salina play with this infield defensive alignment before. No. We have seen them with the corner infielders playing tight on the line the whole game like they're doing, but not the second baseman out there. There are your rusty swings and fouls one along the first base side, count one and two. The other thing is they're not bringing Artson all the way over. Usually when you see a team do this, the shortstop is, if not on the, sec on the first base side of second, they're at least near the bag. More. And Artson's shaded towards the bag, but he's not extremely over there. Next pitch is down and in. Gets away from the catcher and coming home to score on the wild pitch is Wark. Now yeah, Wark with a, a really good lead off of the third base bag. No doubt he was going to score on that wild pitch and it looked like Million actually lost it. Didn't quite know where it went. Wark in easily. Didn't get that far away, but yeah, Million couldn't find it, and Work, of course, always aggressive on the running. Next pitch on a bounce, ball three, three and two now the count to Uresti. And now they're having a discussion about the count down there. So we'll see here if we gave it to you wrong. Pitch is swung on, fouled off, off the netting to the left. We'll do it again. <laughs> Matt wearing the bright red batting gloves. And he swings and misses and down he goes. So two away here. Now Here's Chris Fornacci. He's walked and scored, singled and scored, one for one. Two down, nobody on here in the bottom of the fifth. Ten nothing, Admirals lead it. Chris with that oven mitt in his back right pocket that he uses to protect the thumb when he's on the bases. Takes a curveball in there for a strike. It's 0-1. Be on the infield shifts back into a more traditional alignment for Salina. Chris chokes up on that bat, maybe an inch. Another curveball. This one misses down and away, 1-1. One and, one. and Chris, of course, always with the batting gloves unbuckled. Takes a look at his bat. Now he steps in. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That's right there for a strike. It's 1-2. and two. That's how are my batting gloves, Damon. Are you always unbuckled, Stephen? My batting gloves and my wide receiver gloves. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Just for watching TV at home, you know. 1-2 misses a little bit outside. Makes me feel faster and like I have more power. How tacky are your gloves? Uh, they're the legit Nike Vapor wide receiver <laughs> gloves. <laughs> All right. Curveballs lined into, uh, no, coming over to make the catch is Watson. So a little soft line drive to second to end the inning. A run on a hit. Nobody left. We're through five complete here on Bay Area Sports.tv and the Admirals Baseball Network. The score, Vallejo 10, Salina nothing. B and B Floral One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, 12, 13, 14, 15. It offers same day flower delivery for last minute gift needs. Our professional florist can help you find the perfect flowers for any individual or occasion. B and B Floral at 1049 Redwood Street, 
sponsors our B&B Floral Sweetheart of the Night at Wilson Park. Call 707-552-8757 and make B&B Floral your first choice for flowers. As part of the AFL-CIO, the Napa Solano Central Labor Council represents 50,000 union members. We advocate for social and economic justice and the improvement of working and living conditions for everyone. Learn more at NapaSolanoCLC.org. Bay Area Internet Connection, the official web hosting and IT provider of the Vallejo Admirals. Check them out at BAICmultimedia.com or call 707-297-6789. Damon Esper, Stephen Babb with you back here at Wilson Park Admirals with a 10-0 lead as we head to the sixth inning here give you uh, Young's line on the game four innings pitch, eight hits, nine runs five of them earned, three walks, two strikeouts right now Jordan on the hook for the loss and meantime Dakota Freese on cruise control Dakota coming in here in the top of the six through five he struck out ten four walks three hits no runs allowed and Dakota will face the bottom third of the order it will be Johnny Knight Dave Gallagher Ed Million for the stockade it's 92 strikeouts on the year for Dakota he led the league in 2017 he split time with the San Rafael Pacifics and Pittsburgh Diamonds that year. So looking to claim his second strikeout crown as Nick Akins is trying to claim his second home run crown. Pitch is high, ball one to Johnny Knight. Johnny fly down and walked, 0 for 1. Akins Sr. with 19 homers on this season. Leads the Pacific Association. Next pitch is in for a strike. Count even up. One ball and one strike. Return throw goes through, so Fries has to get it thrown back to him from Chris Fernacci out of second base. Again, just a gorgeous summer's afternoon here at the ballpark. Hope you make it out tomorrow as Fries misses with the curveball. It's 2-1. and one. Admirals taking on San Rafael at 1.05 p.m. Just four home games left on the regular season schedule. Next pitch is up and in. Ball three. Likely the Admirals will host a playoff game. They are four games ahead of Napa for fourth place. The only way they wouldn't is if they fell to fourth. That pitch is in there for a strike. Three and two now the count. Playoffs open on the 28th. The third place team will host the fourth place team on the 28th. Then on the 29th, the winner of that game plays at the second place team. 3-2 pitch is down and in. Ball four, and it's a leadoff walk for Knight. The 92 strikeouts for Dakota puts him 11 ahead of teammate Carl Bryce, who's in second place in the association with 81. They've been kind of going back and forth, trading off between first and second in strikeouts for a little while now. Here's Gallagher. He was hit by a pitch last time up. Wa uh, struck out his first time, 0 for 1. Freeze back into the stretch. Knight held on by Wark. Here's the pitch. Fastball up and in. Ball 1. Gallagher, right-handed hitter, playing third base today for the Stockade. Here's the 1-0, and that's him for a strike. It's 1-1. One one. Ed Milan on deck for Salina. Admirals 11-0 against the Stockade this year, trying to stay perfect. 
One one pitch. Curve ball in there for a strike and it's one and two. Freeze working quickly. Here's the one two. That's hit sharply along the third base line but foul. Count remains, one ball and two strikes to Dave Gallagher. Freeze has a new baseball, now he comes set. One two pitch, curve ball, drops down a little bit low, ball two. Two and two the count. Here's the 2-2, fastball lifted in the air to right. Gomez shading his eyes, now coming in and to his right. He's there and makes the catch, and there's one away. Now we've seen Gomez not have much trouble at all out there in right field today, as he's done a good job battling the wind and the sun. Yeah, the one uh, play where the wind and sun really hurt was the pop-up that Fernacci had tick off his glove, and Gomez was right there to pick it up and make the throw to get the force play. So one away. Knight still at first. Here's Millian. He's 0 for 2. Struck out both times. First pitch of a fastball down and away. Nice backhand by Cooper. Ball one. Dakota Freese comes set. The 1-0. Fastball lifted in the air towards shallow right field. Gomez started back. Now he's coming in. Makes the catch. Scrambling back to first base is Knight, and there's two away. So two down, and here is Cody Bishop. He's walked, singled, and struck out. One for two. Cody Bishop. Bishop in that jersey top that looks like he washed it with his whites. <laughs> <laughs> Hitting left-handed, standing in there. Two down, man on first here in the sixth. I mean, it just stands out a little bit. <laughs> first pitch is in for a strike. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit faded. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Almost looks like, yeah, it's... Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> one of these things is not like the others. Oh, well, one pitch is down and in. One and one the count. <laughs> <laughs> not trying to pick on Cody. I, I assume it all gets washed together. It just stands out a little bit. <laughs> well, as I say, it all comes out in the wash, Damon. Uh, I see what you did there. But um, One, one pitch. And that's a uh, fastball that spiked. Again, nice backhand by Cooper in the count two and one. All right, freeze back ready. Here's the 2-1, and that's swung on, popped up left side towards the Admiral's dugout. Coming over to have a look is Cooper, but it's on the other side of the fence, and the count is 2-2. Two and two. Admirals have the infield pulled around towards first base against Bishop. Uh, Ureste was standing on the bag, and he kind of is meandering around the base at second. Looks like he's talking with Fenacci about how far over they should pull things. All right, everything's communicated. We're ready to go. Here's the 2-2. Swing and a miss. Down goes Bishop. And down goes the stockade. No runs, no hits. A walk. A man left. We're headed to the bottom of the sixth inning here in Vallejo. The score, Admirals 10. Stockade nothing. This is Bay Area Sports TV and the Vallejo Admirals Baseball Network.
Oscat Radio, KZCT 89.5 FM in Vallejo, is once again partnering with the Admirals to bring you 15 games throughout the 2019 season. Oscat Radio is your community radio station. You can flip your radio on in the car and listen to Admirals New picture. Head to OzcatRadio.com or check the schedule in our game day program. You got two because I don't. Nope. Oh, uh, Sykes, no. Sykes Allstate Insurance lives locally no. and is very I got number two listed as Arts. He's committed to helping you with the insurance you That's need right, to Arts protect your family and two, assets. He's, he's number six today, yeah. So, uh, I don't know. Nine, Tennessee Street, Suite 201. Want me to go ask? Sykes Allstate Insurance brings you the In Good Hands Admirals Defensive Player of the Week. Call 554 They didn't send a lineup today. card up, did Sykes they? Allstate Insurance. It's the line uh, Do you have a picture? Picture of it does have the subs on online. it. Uh, let me look. Leoadmirals.com for all the latest news. Or like doesn't have their numbers on Facebook. Doesn't have Follow numbers. at Vallejo Admirals on Twitter and at Vallejo Admirals on Instagram. Photo, video, I got no clue. More yeah, the uh, I'll get on the app online. Thanks, Stephen. All right, Damon S for Stephen Bad back with you. We have a new pitcher for Salina, and we're trying to find out who it is, but he will face the top of the Admiral's order here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Vladimir Gomez, Okoye Dixon, and Chevy Clark. He's wearing number two. He's a right-hander, and he sidearms it. So other than that, we got nothing for you, but we hope to have information soon. Admiral's leading at 10 to nothing. Ten runs, nine hits, no errors for Vallejo. No runs, three hits, an error for the Salina Stockade. Admirals got a home run from Files back in the second inning, then scored four in both the third and the fourth to break this one open. Leading off the bottom of the sixth inning for the Admirals. Tillman Pugh with a three-run shot to really break it open. Tillman hit his three-run home run off the scoreboard. And that came back in the uh, fourth inning, and that's what made it nine to nothing. Gomez takes ball one. Vladimir singled to lead off the game, popped out to shallow right, and singled again. So he's two for three. Swings and chops one foul along the first base line, and the count is one and one. Jake Woods, our new pitcher. So thanks to Mr. Stephen Babb for running down there and asking. Number 95 in your roster, number two in your heart. So one and one the count to Gomez and he takes ball two. So We look here on the statistics and we don't see any appearances for Woods before today as he misses and it's three and one. So we're guessing this is his first appearance for the stockade. Behind three and one to Vladimir Gomez. And the three one is up and in and well it either hit him or it's a walk. Looks like it's a walk. So a lead off walk for Gomez. And here's Okoye Dixon. And yeah, no stats for Woods prior to today, so this is his debut with the stockade. Dixon is one for three, singled and scored a run in the third, also struck out, hit into a double play, now 19 for 52 on the year. Six home runs, 18 runs batted in, and 16 runs scored in his 12 games. Takes off speed breaking pitch in for a strike, and it's 0 and 1. For those of you that can't see, it looks like Jake Woods and Cody Bishop washed their laundry together. That's right. <laughs> that swung on a high fly ball to center field, back to the wall, leaping and gone. Home run for Okoye Dixon. home run of the game for the Admirals. As an Admiral 
Number seven on the year for the Washington High School product, and the Admirals lead it 12 to nothing. And it is 12 to nothing, Vallejo. As we've said already today, it's only Dixon's 12th game with Vallejo. Number 25. And an impressive seven home runs. So here is Chevy Clark batting left-handed still against the right-hander. Chevy came on for Aikens, hit a sacrifice fly, hit by a pitch and scored a run. So no official at-bats, but he has a run scored and an RBI. And he takes strike one, 0-1. Boy, Dixon has just been roping the ball ever since he came to the Admirals. What a huge addition to the offense. Breaking ball misses outside, one and one. Wood set, and that pitch is swung on, lifted in the air behind third base. Gallagher going back, coming over his arts, and it's in no man's land, and it's going to fall in for a base hit. That was Canella playing well off the line out there and left, which is not unusual here. That ball just dropped into no man's land. Really tough play for Gallagher at third. We've talked about this, Stephen. It's that there's a lot of pop fly singles behind first and third that we see here. And of course added with the wind and everything else during the daytime. So a single for Clark. He's now one for one, and here's Tillman Pugh. Last time up, Tillman hit that home run off the scoreboard. Also walked and scored a run. One for two, two runs scored, three runs batted in for Tillman. So Jimenez's jersey, good luck for Tillman today. That's a breaking ball lifted foul off the net to the right, 0-1. <laughs> Woods gets his sign from Million. Another breaking ball. That one gets through Million, but Clark stays at first. One and one the count. <laughs> On deck is Zach Files. He's also had a good game. And the pitch is swung on and missed, and it's one and two. Just uh, remind all of our listeners out there that TJ's Designs, the official apparel of the Vallejo Admirals, up to 50% off select items here at Wilson Park. So come on out for home games for the remainder of the season. Ball is inside, two and two the count. Now, we've seen three times here today, they are also tossing some t-shirts up into the Marina Dental Grandstands as a thank you to our patrons. And the next pitch misses. And the count now three and two to Tillman Pugh. He swings and it's a chopper along the third base line. Up with it is Gallagher and he throws it away as Zudenhorst. That's not Zudenhorst, I'm sorry. That's Rodriguez at first base. Has to retrieve it. Yeah, that ball wasn't hit very hard right on the line. Gallagher charging in and tried to make a play on it, but it was would have been a tough play regardless as Pugh was making his way down the line pretty easy. And uh, yeah, I would definitely give Gallagher the error on that one. So an E5, second and third now with nobody out still here in the bottom of the sixth inning. What do you think, Damon? Error on Gallagher there? I was trying to decide if it was one and one or two base error all the way. I think one and more. I don't know. I think it's I think it's a two base. <laughs> I think it's a two base error. All right. But you're uh, you're keeping score over here. Yeah, but I trust you. That's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> so here is Files. He homered, singled, and struck out. Two for three, and he takes ball one. Yeah. 
Next pitch misses. It's ball two. Two zero pitch off speed in for a strike. It's two and one. Trying to get the point streak to all match up here. All right, I think I got it. All right. Two one off speed swung on foul back. Count now two and two. Looking at transactions, how long has Files been back off the IL, Damon? Uh, he was activated the other day. He came in and pinch hit last night. This is his first start back. 2-2 two -two pitch down low. Ball three. The rosters had to be finalized by midnight on Thursday night, I think. So you can only, uh, you can bring somebody off the injured list, I think, but otherwise you can only add somebody if a player gets hurt or promoted. That's flared down the third base line, ducking under it as Clark. It's in foul territory. We'll do it again. So three and two, the count to Zach Files. Runners at second and third, nobody out. Two runs in for the Admirals here in the six. That's fouled off again. We'll do it once again. So three and two to Files. Woods looking in to Million for a sign. Now Jake comes set. And that's swung on. Fouled straight back again. Looks like Zach's not missing by a whole lot. Woods unable to fool him on any of the off-speed or fastballs that he's been throwing to Files. 3-2, and that's hit in the air to right. Coming over and to his left, and unable to make the play is Knight, and that ball's going to drop for a hit. In the score is Clark. Going to third is Pugh, and now as the ball gets away from Watson, Pugh comes in to score. So it's going to be a double for one RBI, an error to allow the second run to score, and a three-hit day for Files. And right on cue, Zach pulls it down, not down the line, but closer towards the line than what the right fielder Johnny Knight was playing, and unable to get over to it in time. Pugh had to hold up because he wanted to make sure the ball wasn't caught. So he had stopped at third base, and then when the ball got away there, he came around to score. So another four spot put up by the Admirals, and there's still nobody out. Work chops one to first. Up with the ball is Rodriguez. He goes to the bag. Over to third base goes Files, and that is the first out of the inning. So one down, and here is Ryan Cooper. Cooper walked and scored, flied out twice. He's 0 for 2. <laughs> 14 to nothing. Admirals lead it. A curveball is in for a strike. It's 0 and 1. And we're almost done here. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning, a seven-inning game here. Cooper lays off a pitch up and in, one and one. For Salina, it'll be two, three, four. Cos Canella, Omar Artson, and Taylor Zudenhorst do up in the seventh. Next pitch is in for a strike. It's one and two. Here's the one, two, and that's grounded back up the middle. Woods tries to make a kick save on it, and instead it's through for a base hit. So Cooper singles in a run as Files comes in to score, and it's 15 to nothing, Admirals. The shortened game only playing seven here this afternoon. Time-wise, not as short as what you would hope. <laughs> So 15 nothing. here is Matt Uresti, and he takes ball one. Right. 
Where are we? We're at, we're at two and a half hours right now, Stephen. That's lined into right field, a base hit. Cooper will stop at second. Hit number 14 for the Admirals, and here's Chris Frenacci. The good news is Steven's going to call the seventh. That's fantastic <laughs> news, David. <laughs> number eight, Chris Frenacci. Frenacci walked and scored, singled and scored, hit a... Uh, Soft line drive to second to end the fifth inning, so he is one for two with a couple of runs. Admiral's leader in on base percentage on the year stands in against Woods. Here's the pitch, and that's line down the left field line and in towards the corner. Here comes Cooper. He will score. Stopping at third base is Uresti. Into second with the double is Fernacci, and it's 16 to nothing. Now batting, right fielder, number 10, Vladimir Gomez. They now are have batted around. It's still only one out here in the bottom half of the sixth as Vladimir Gomez is coming back into the box. Well, first, we're going to have Taylor Zudenhorst out there. And we'll see if that's going to be all for Woods or not. Nobody's throwing. There is. Kozak is heading down. He's their other catcher. He's going to start warming somebody up. But obviously, Salina would like to get out of here without having to use another pitcher before they head over to San Rafael for their second game today. Again, this is the double headers all year in the Pacific Association for Salina on Saturdays. Up until this point, everybody playing nine inning games, but we're told today we're doing seven. And with the game 16 nothing right now, I think that's a best for everybody. <laughs> looks like looks like Ricky Bielski is doing a little soft toss, and somebody else actually might be getting more warmed up. So here is Gomez. Gomez singled, popped out, singled, and walked. He scored a run. Also knocked in one. Tenth man to bat here in the sixth, and he takes in there for a strike, 0-1. It looks like Aaron Sheeks. Sheeks? Sheeks. Sheeks? Sheeks? Aaron. Like, Aaron, that, number seven. Is that like the Iron Sheik? Remember the wrestler? That's exactly like the Iron Sheik. Gomez swings and fouls it off at the plate, 0-2 the count. So two righties starting to get a loose over there for Salina. Sit. I'm going to double check the score here. That's foul right back at us. Count remains 0-2. Sixteen to nothing. That's swung on and missed, and down goes Gomez. Designated hitter number four, Okoye Dixon. I see what happened. Somehow I gave us another run way, way, way back. Have I told you how much I hate this program, Stephen? <laughs> the broadcasting program or the point no, streak? No, the point streak. <laughs> God. <laughs> All right, pitches a strike to Dixon. He homered earlier this inning, a two-run shot. His seventh as an admiral. He swings at that one. And that's fouled out of play, and the count is quickly 0-2 to Okoye. All right, 16 to nothing. 16 runs, 15 hits, no errors for Vallejo. No runs, three hits, three errors for Salina. And we're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Two down, six runs in for the Admirals here in the frame as Dixon takes ball one, one and two. And that's fouled off. Count remains one and two. Woods trying to 
get his way out of this. <laughs> Jake comes set, right-hander deals, and that's swung on, lift in the air to left, trying to find it in the sun, now going back towards the wall, at the wall, and gone! Three-run home run for Koye Dixon. Cos Canella could not find the ball, and when he finally found it, it was over the fence. Yeah, it didn't look like Okoye got all of that one at all, but just showing how much strength the right-hander does have, he was able to send it out over the fence in left field. A three-run home run for Dixon. That's his eighth of the year, second of the inning, and it's 19 to nothing, and the Admirals have scored a season high 19 runs, and we're only gonna have a seven-inning game here today. First pitch of Chevy Clark is swung on and missed, 0 won the count. Yeah, the 19 runs besting their previous high score of 18 that we saw a couple weeks ago here at Wilson Park. Swing and a miss, it's quickly 0-2. That's right, 18 runs, a season high. Their hit season high is 18, so the 16 hits today, not a season high. Clark lifts one in the left field. Canella moving to his left. He's got it. And the side is retired. We're headed to the seventh inning. Last call for the stockade. They're going to need at least 19 to keep this one going. For the Admirals here in the sixth inning, nine runs on seven hits, two errors, nobody left on base. To the seventh inning we go. This is Bay Area Sports.tv and the Vallejo Admirals Baseball Network. Applied Pest Management. They provide their customers with efficient and cost-effective pest control service. Having been in business over 35 years, they have stayed on top of the changes in the industry. Visit them at 2425 Sonoma Boulevard in Vallejo at AppliedPestMGT.com or call 1-800-244-1176. Yeah, I know. Can you imagine if we had to go nine today? Oh. Gracie's on 1801 Sonoma Boulevard provides post-game player meals for select Vallejo Admirals home games. Gracie specializes in barbecue and southern-style comfort food. Everything is made from scratch. No, they Gracie's scored 21 in a game last year. And Gracie's loves the community the way I've got all that barbecue. stuff. Call 707-552-2254. Gracie's, great people, great food. Olympic Health Club, you're guaranteed to have a great right, workout. Seven, Olympic is super committed to their clients and creating the best fitness plans possible to get you the results you're looking for. Call Olympic Health Club at 643-6887 or find them on Facebook today. All right, Damon Esper and Stephen Babb back with you here at Wilson Park. 19 to nothing, the Admirals in the laugher of all laughers to this point, it'll be Kaz Canella, Omar Artson, and Taylor Zudenhorst coming up for Salina in the top of the seventh inning. And again, as we understand it, this is going to be it. Dakota Free still out there looking to complete a seven inning shutout. Freeze with 10 strikeouts in the game. Vallejo three outs away from winning their 12th game against Salina this season. That would make them 12-0 against the Stockade. So we know that the Admirals scored 21 runs in a game last year, and we're digging up that right now as ball one to Canella. Yeah, definitely a season high in run totals for the 2019 year. 1-0 pitch is outside, ball two, 2-0. Two it's a four hour and 18 minute game previously when they scored 18 runs. Pitch is 3-0. The Admirals beat Sonoma last year by a score of 20-4 in a game at Sonoma. 
Then later in the year, they beat Pittsburgh 21 to 11 here. Four pitch walk to Canella leading off the seventh. So that's their high scores last year. It's going to bring up shortstop Omar Artson. And the 21 and 20 are the team records for runs in a game. So this is the third most runs in a game for the Admirals by our quick check of the history. 19 nothing. Here's the pitch, a big curveball. Of course, Freeze was sitting in the dugout through that very long inning and no doubt lost his touch a little bit. Ball one to Artson. Artson singled, walked, and flied out. One for two. Big lead at first for Canella, but not going anywhere. And that pitch sends Artson staggering out of the box as it's up and in. Ball two, two and oh. So six straight balls pitched by Freeze. So I think you're absolutely right. That long layoff in the dugout has definitely affected Dakota. And if the shutout is finished, it would be the team record for the largest shutout. Next pitch is in for a strike. It's two and one. Definitely impressive, especially given that we're only playing seven innings here today. Next pitch misses. High ball three. Well, if it was high school, they would have stopped it on the mercy rule. And th the seven innings had me... It reminded me of softball that I've called at the college level. That mercy rule would have come into play there as, two, two, as well. 3-1 is fouled straight back. It's 3-2 and two now to Omar Artson. I just realized I was supposed to hand off to you. Do you want to finish the game here? Sure, why not? All right, sorry. Hey, here's Steven with the play-by-play. 3-2 -play. <laughs> count now to Artson. I tried to ease my way in there, but no, you're on a roll. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know better. So one on and nobody out. Full count to Artson. And that is a called strike three. Artson didn't like it. Nonetheless, that's the first out of the top half of the seventh inning. Now up, Taylor Zutenhorst, the DH. 12 strikeouts now, does that sound right? That is correct. Have yourself a day, Dakota. Well, part of you is kind of like, hey, can you have a day like this against uh, in the playoff game? <laughs> And that first pitch has popped up high down third baseline. And that's Zach Files running over in the dirt and catches it at the fence. What a fantastic play there by Files. That's two down. A runner on first is going to bring up Rupert Watson. Rupert's 0 for 3 today with two strikeouts. And he's popped out to Tillman Pugh in center. I got so focused on looking up the shutouts and the most runs and everything, I forgot to hand off. So. Oh, no worries. No, no, no. It's a team game, even up here in the booth. Uh, first pitch to Rupert is in there for a called strike. Cos Canella walks down to second base. No need to throw by Cooper. That would seem to be indifference. The 0 one pitch on the way. And on the outside corner, call strike two. One strike away from a seven-inning complete game for Dakota Freeze. To improve to seven and five on the season. As I mentioned, the 12th straight win over Salina. I think it's safe to say that that is going to happen. 19-0 here in the top half of the seventh as that pitch is outside in the dirt. One and two. It's been a great afternoon for baseball here at Wilson Park. Make sure to join us out here tomorrow. 105 first pitch. 
And that is off the nubs and right back at Dakota. Very fitting for Dakota to end the game on a line drive right back at them. And as I was saying, just what what an awesome afternoon for Vallejo baseball here at Wilson Park. Dakota Freeze going seven strong, seven shutout, twelve strikeouts. He hit a couple guys, but when you're striking him out at that rate, not that big of a deal. Nineteen to zero is the final score here. Vallejo over the Salina Stockade. Their twelfth straight win over Salina. Vallejo's going to improve to 31 and 27. Now a game and a half behind San Rafael. Well, the final totals will be 19 runs, 16 hits, no errors for Vallejo. No runs, three hits, three errors for Salina. The Admirals only left two men on base in seven innings, while Salina left 11. Dakota Freese with the win. He'll improve to 7-5 and five on the year. It's a shutout with an asterisk. Remember, the Admirals have only had two complete game shutouts in team history. And this counts as a shutout, but it's going to be a seven-inning shutout. So now I'll have to figure out how to list that in my records. <laughs> uh, the losing pitcher falling to 0-1, his first decision is Jordan Young. Time of the game was two hours and 47 minutes. Yeah, definitely trying to shorten it. And still almost almost going three hours. I mean, 19 runs is just, it's impressive, especially for a seven-inning game. So, center fell is coming in here tomorrow. The Admirals trying to take that seventh, or excuse me, that second spot in the Pacific Association from San Rafael. It's a 1.05 start time here at Wilson Park. I will be on the call along with Tim Fitzgerald. We'll also be on OzCat Radio tomorrow. As well as the Mixler app. OzCat Radio, local Vallejo radio station, 89.5. And the Admirals, Damon, you know, the first half of the season, we mentioned it before, started off a little rough, a little slow. They, Their offense was having trouble getting going. Uh, even their defense was struggling in the beginning part of the season. And now the second half is just really woken up, and their bats have been on fire. Indeed. Uh, the Admirals, uh, another big win here. The offense uh, has been, as you said, hitting the ball well. Uh, they've been good even when they're struggling of course they've been good against the line all year not having lost and now with just one game left against the stockade here uh, 12 and 0 uh, important to get this win and get back on the winning track get some confidence going again with San Rafael coming in tomorrow and that of course really a huge game with seven game uh, six games to go now and were the Admirals to lose that game tomorrow probably all chance of finishing second would be out the window. So tomorrow, probably the biggest game of the year for the Admirals. Uh, again, it'll be on OzCat Radio, as will the Wednesday game at Sonoma. So if you can, please tune in on KZCT 89.5 OzCat Radio tomorrow and listen to Tim and Steven with the call. I'll be off at the A's game uh, watching the A's and the Astros as the A's try and come back and uh, catch the Astros in the AL West. And I'll be back with you in Sonoma on Wednesday, but uh, you'll have fun tomorrow. Oh, absolutely. It's going to be a great day. As I mentioned for baseball here at Wilson Park, the Admiral is definitely trying to move into second place against San Rafael, so be sure to come out here and join us. And, and we want to thank BayAreaSports.tv for simulcasting the game and all of you people out there who watched on BayAreaSports.tv. And Good afternoon, everybody. We'll yeah. See you out here tomorrow. All right. Thanks a lot. Once again, the final score, Vallejo 19, Salina nothing. Have a very pleasant good afternoon, everybody.